The Gila River is a very rare and special thing. It's remarkable in many ways. It's a living, breathing, wild and free river that starts in the headwaters of America's first wilderness, runs right through the heart of the wilderness, and then outside of the protected area, all the way to the Arizona border and beyond, um, most western rivers are dammed or diverted. And so to have something that hasn't been tamed, that hasn't been diverted or dammed, is uh, a very special and rare thing that we need to hold on to and uh, we should not take it for granted. This is the last free-flowing river in New Mexico, so it's really important, not only in New Mexico, but really worldwide. It's a pretty amazing place, uh, home to over 300 species of birds, uh, some of the last uh, riparian bosque in the lower Colorado River Basin. For the most part, it's, not, it's a river in New Mexico, at least, that's not dammed and not um, diverted largely away from its natural bank. It sometimes floods hugely and in the summer during the drought times it gets really low so it's got this, these wild swings. Uh, it's a wild river. It's very natural and, and that's why we love it. You know for me it's a feeling, right? the criteria to say what what is wild. It doesn't have a dam for one, that puts it in the 10% of rivers. It's got native vegetation, uh, very little invasive species, uh, incredible biodiversity. We want to try to do something more proactive to protect the Gila River forever and permanently. The Gila River flows out of the Gila Wilderness, which is the first wilderness area in, in the United States, really the first wilderness area anywhere. It was established in 1924 at the request of Aldo Leopold, who worked for the Forest Service at the time. Uh, he was a conservationist, a forester, a hunter, a fisherman, and um, he, he worked all over the West. He kind of uh, became quite enamored with the Gila because that little river is just so wild and so beautiful. It's this huge expanse of land that doesn't occur very many places and the river just flows right out of it. You know, it's just this wild, fresh flow of water that comes out of one of the wildest places in North America. So it's really special that way. Uh, and sometimes we call it America's first wilderness river. It's because it, it originates way up in the high country in America's first wilderness. So it's, uh, it's a pretty unique place. Well, Aldo Leopold envisioned a wilderness that was large enough in size that you could do a two-week pack trip through on a horse and not cover the same ground. And so that size, having that area intact, is a, an extremely rare thing. And to be able to be that remote and enjoy that kind of solitude uh, is very, very special. Well, it is unique in that it was done uh, uh, before the Wilderness Act, so there wasn't really uh, legislation to protect wilderness. There was something so special about this place that, that 40 years earlier, it demanded, it commanded protection. Aldo Leopold saw the beauty and the wildness and just felt like it was worth protecting. Leopold's a pretty compelling character. He really was sort of the father of wilderness protection and has a whole philosophy about protecting places for themselves, not just for human enjoyment.
enjoyment. And you know, he, he, he developed this thing called the land ethic, which basically says that if it's right for the land, it's right. Ethically, it's the right thing to do. Wild places deserve to exist for their own right, for, you know, for their own values. One thing that makes the Gila precious is that it's dictates of nature and not uh, dam releases or um, manipulation. It's fantastic. Growing up in the Midwest, I always kind of imagined the wilds, you know, like the mountains and the rivers and just that, that great teacher of the river. Most rivers in the West are, are dammed. That means they're controlled by humans uh, for our own purposes. Uh, wild rivers are uh, extremely rare. Uh, and Wild and Scenic River, uh, which is a designation that protects its free-flowing character, is even more rare. And so uh, there's only one-tenth of one percent, about 125 river miles in New Mexico, that's formally protected as wild and scenic. The Gila River is not protected as wild and scenic, and that's why you see these diversion proponents try these uh, efforts time and time again over these decades and so what we want to do is protect it permanently so that we don't have to play defense every 15 or 20 years.